Hey, Paulie, what's happening, man? Husky, good to see you, man. Good, good to, to see, see you, you too. New week, new week, new me, right? Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, new week, new me. I'll go with that. I'll go with that. Did I book you a trip flashing. next year? Oh, already. I'm thinking ahead. Thinking ahead. Going, going to Florida, spring break. House is booked, right. paid for in the in the in the books. So we're just kind of kicking that around. That was actually some good news we got handled today. Although it was a mess because we booked through PayPal. Oh, and it didn't. It could have been a mess. It wasn't a mess. A mess avoided. Everything mm. worked out fine. What uh? What city? May I ask? Uh, Davenport. So it's Davenport, Florida. It's a big, big area, kind of right off the expressway. I don't, I don't know, I four maybe, but it's like this community champions gate. It's all gated. They're just super huge houses. People book through Airbnb stuff like that. Nice. They're constantly right. being being rented. Is it on the beach or near the beach? No, no. So it's okay. Central Florida. Okay. Um, you know, whatever half hour claims to be a half hour from Orlando, but you get on that road, it's cool. going to take you a good hour, hour and a half. You know, yeah, we're planning Disney, you know, okay. they're getting up there in age. The kids are getting up there in age. Yeah. Grandkids. Oof. You're old. Buy, dude. I'm going to, you'll, you'll see me in the goofy hat. I got to buy one. You had a, uh, you were sporting something a minute oh, ago. Oh, I have something here. Yeah, man. Where'd you get that? Get out, dude. What is that? That's different. UFC. That's different. That's so limited. Let me tell you guys something. Listen. So there's my son collects these bottles and unopened bottles. And there's two dudes that went out of their way so far. And actually a couple more, but I already had them. Um, but two dudes that went out of their way for me, for him, actually, and hooked us up with Prime that we've never gotten in our area. And one that I know I could never get in my area. Hang tight with me. All right. So in the mail, my good friend Emil sent these ones, UFC 300 limited bottles just for that event. And now we have one, right? So his collection is going to be anything we can buy here in the U.S. that would be available to anybody to go and buy. Well, this one wasn't. This one wasn't just available for anybody to buy. You found it somewhere and at a very cheap price. And then a pal from California, Mikey Y., this one is a sponsors of the LA Dodgers, Ooh. which I would never get in Michigan. And it's like a baseball, right? It's got the stripes on a I'm baseball, that. good stuff. So That's very, cool. very cool. I appreciate it. He appreciates it. I've got him writing you a nice little letter and we will put it in the mailbox. <laughs> Hashtag prime. Hit us up, guys. But, yeah, dude. Listen, hit us up. What do you want? It's delicious. You guys are watching the Crucible. Welcome. My name's Emil. My name is Paul. Thank you for joining us. What do we got going? We have a very special guest today. Uh, he is the the one and only Bunker Buster himself. Let's go ahead and bring him on. Yeah. Hey, hey. Hey, guys. How you doing? How you doing? Good. I'm good. good to I see host you. Silver with Bunker Boolean. That's okay. So we just met backstage just a few minutes ago. And before we get too involved in anything, I got to know where it all came from. Obviously, I know everybody knows Hi Ho Silver, but where does this stem from? Introduce yourself. Uh oh. I might have. Oh, there he is. There you are. <laughs> there you are. Yeah, I have I'm no idea froze what up. you just said, but I'm, I'm sure it was motivational and moving. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead okay. rehash it Polly. yeah I, the the name hi ho silver bunker bullion where did it come from please introduce yourself to the audience and let us know uh the backstory of that where where are you coming from with that well i'm a retired uh professional musician and a music teacher and uh i started stacking silver at about 2014 um 10 years and i started a youtube channel and that's the name i came up with hi ho silver so uh Away. that's how that started and uh a couple years later i started pouring silver just as a, a little fun thing to do on my channel which uh, at the time was kind of fairly good sized and uh it just caught on so my tagline with my hi ho channel was uh i host silver from the bunker deep in the woods of the Pacific Northwest. 
So I just ended up calling uh, my brand Bunker Bullion, and uh, I've enjoyed it, and other people have enjoyed it, so I'm still doing it. That's fantastic. So are, are you like a, uh, you, you operate out of your garage, or where do you go? I have, a, I have a shop that's hidden, um, but nice. separate from my house. I don't like to, uh, in 2018, I kind of went public with my name as I signed uh, on with some different uh, people and it became more public uh with the llc it's all findable anyway so i took some additional security steps to make sure i don't have any metals in my home so i have a, i have a separate shop that i use very smart very smart so if you could estimate how many ounces of silver do you think you've poured to date oh man somebody asked me that and i started trying to do math and i'm actually decent at math but i didn't come up <laughs> with a good number um Tens of thousands. Really Tens of thousands. Holy wow. cow. I'm not sure. I've I been like doing that. it for about 10 years, so it's not really that much, but uh, it adds up, yeah. Yeah, tens of thousands is a big number. I, I thought you would have said maybe like four or 5,000, but yeah. uh, but wow, that's impressive. What's your what's your go to like when when you started your your first pour? Were you melting just random stuff you had in the house, or were you buying shot? Were you buying just um, What's generic yeah Maybe. generic like buffaloes yeah. or anything like that well what's your go-to when i started stacking i i really had a really diverse stack i finished all my goals in 2018 but i started oh. pouring in 2015 late 2014 um one of the things that i had just picked up along the way was a 10 ounce little bag of shot thinking that i okay. would have somebody make that into something for me and uh, I just, yeah, I, I just decided, okay, well, I'll just try it myself. So that's the first thing I did was, was melt that. I've got my uh, first day pouring video on my YouTube channel still. I did it nice. outside in the forest, man, with a little propane furnace, and uh, that's how it started. And so I just kind of kept working on it. Eventually, I started um, melting whatever I could get my hands on for a decent price. And uh, there was really hardly anybody doing it, especially on, on, on YouTube and other social uh -huh. media. So um, I had customers really quick since my channel was decent sized and um, I just melted whatever. Now I melt uh, almost a hundred percent shot just uh, from a particular producer that um his his work his shot performs really well i wish i knew why okay silver of the same purity performed differently but it does mm -hmm. and uh, so i use uh his shot to get especially the more mirror like perfection type pieces that i that i cast in for yeah and on that topic um you almost have like an artistic eye for how you present these pieces on your chain on your uh at least on your instagram from what yes. i've seen yeah that that true. mirror finish is beautiful but you incorporate like some kind of a, a backdrop i don't know if it's like a serape or something it's, it's really a, go ahead it's a honey bunches of oats cereal box from costco are you kidding me no man <laughs> <laughs> it's got a bunch of cool colors tricks of the trade sometimes I've, it'll I've... be a coke can whatever's sitting on my kitchen counter when i'm filming the the samples that's see i thought like, you were using this beautiful textile from some foreign country or something yeah here you're using honey bunches of oats yeah, but i mean know. you you find a way to get the colors uh to really show and and it highlights the reflectiveness um what you were talking about a second ago is this shot from this su supplier of yours uh that melts better and i guess maybe even cools better every now and then you get these pieces that come out with um I don't know what it's, it's, it's almost like a dimple in the middle and then like little crackle ripples around it. What do you have a, do you have a word for that? I call them dimple casts. Okay. The, uh, you're okay. talking probably the, uh, probably about my cooled series. Is that what you're thinking? Probably. Yeah. That oh, sounds about right. Those are casts. Um, the real, real perfect mirrored things I do are, are what I call direct melt casts. And that allows me to cool the silver incredibly slowly and what happens when you do that the properties of the metal create that dimple in the middle mm. so i call them uh my dimple cast and with those you can um you can cause some bubbling 
from below and hmm. the the bubble if you overdo it you'll burn your shop down but if you do it right you can get a last little bubble or two right before the final surface cools and that creates a pool around that dimple i just wow. i find that really cool that's i'm an artist i'm a musician so that's yeah. taking a lot of time to achieve to a lot of test and tune eh i'm sorry say that again i said that that took you a lot of testing a lot of testing and tuning to to find that out and figure it out the times and how long it takes and all that great stuff I, when I first started in particular, I'm not a very handy guy. I'm a trumpet player. So uh, I wasn't, you know, good with tools, never had furnace type stuff. I had no clue. And there was nobody to show me. So I just experimented. Yeah. And I um, probably the first five or 600 pours I did, I filmed up close, slow motion. And uh, that's how I learned what silver does under different circumstances so i would study uh -huh. uh, oh i see when i do this this happens um, wow. and i made a bar for the bear i'm sure you guys are aware of him mm -hmm. one of my good silver friends and uh, that was the first bar that i did and it's crazy man it's bubble city and then on the top it's got some really cool texture and from that i started figuring out okay how can i how can i manipulate that it's still not something I can do every time. It's just one of those things sometimes. So if right. you're cooling silver inside a furnace, the differential temperature between the silver itself and the mold around it and the air that surrounds it is what causes that bubbling to want to happen from below. So I kind of figured that out. But a lot of mm. what I did was just experimental. And those are the kind of things that, had I known what I was doing or had I had somebody show me how to do stuff, I would have never figured out some of my more unique techniques. Hmm. Sure. Sure. That's actually really cool to hear that you actually recorded all that stuff and learned from your own stuff in slow motion. That takes a lot of time and, and effort to actually want to do something like that to, to get to where you're at today. Right. I am. Um, like I said, I had no clue what I was doing and that seemed, my channel, the High Ho Silver channel on YouTube, was kind of along that same. I enjoyed making videos with, um, I had a, a place up in the forest in the Cascade Mountains in Washington State. And every Friday, the end of the school week, I would go up into the woods, um, mostly because there are different thoughts that were available to me when I was secluded in the forest. And mm -hmm. uh, after working with a couple hundred kids every day, I enjoyed having that piece at the end of the week. Um, so I would, I would coordinate and choreograph my, uh, my videos with music as a musician. That's something I did and um, show my animals and show the nature around and talk more about uh, things going on in my world. That's kind of what YouTube was like back in the day. It was a community where it wasn't just talking about silver and all that. And I never really got into the, giving advice kind of thing um right i'm more confident that the advice i would give now would be good advice so i, I do a little more of that now but um it was just fun for me to include the music in in what i was doing and that's sure. that's kind of sure. how i continue doing it on instagram so what would you say some of your your best advice to give to somebody let's say in this case for somebody who's new to pouring uh wants to pouring. get into it um, don't sell too soon would be the first one. Um, as new people learn, practice was always part of my life. Every single day it was get your instrument out and practice. Right. And, uh, so that's my first tip. You practice. This is an art form or a craft that, uh, allows you to reuse your, medium over oh, yeah. and over yeah, i was going to mention that yeah and there's no sense in uh putting out uh, it's like a, a beginner musician taking their violin you know <laughs> onto the stage and saying here i am you know um maybe learn how to play a little first uh and see where you go from there so that's my biggest tip is don't be in a hurry to sell you need to practice and uh kind of develop some skills first excellent find your style right yeah, that comes later. First, find 
again, I my mind is just a musician's mind. I relate everything to music. A, a musician can't find their style, in my opinion, until you understand and can create more general style. And then from that point, you learn to develop your own individualized concept of what you want to sound like and, and those sorts of things. So um, I guess the other tip would be get the equipment that matches what it is that you see yourself doing. So for example, you'll see a lot of pourers uh, using those red furnaces, mm -hmm. um, pouring fractional pieces. And so you have a crucible that'll hold two kilograms or even three kilograms and you're pouring a half ounce bar. That doesn't make any sense. It makes it incredibly difficult and dangerous. So um, that would be another thing is, is make sure the equipment you have suits the purpose you're going to do. I went right to big stuff uh -huh. um, and, and all electric almost. I hardly ever use any torch because I live... Uh, I live in Douglas County, right on the Columbia River. So we, we have publicly owned hydroelectric dams. We have officially the cheapest electricity in the country. So I decided I'm going to go electric. And because uh, the gas people use, it's, it's pretty costly. Right. Yeah. Very good. And what about advice towards uh, new stackers? Because you, you are a stacker also. It's not just pouring you do. I was a stacker first. I've finished adding to my own stack. I still get to kind of play around with my collection. I have a, a pretty sizable stack still. That's um, I've been, I always had a five-year goal. And I guess that would be my tip is set some goals. Sure. But uh, I set up, I decided to stack before I made any purchases. And I started dollar cost averaging into a separate account that I intended to use to buy on the dips. So I kind of did a kind of a hybrid system. I believe in dollar cost averaging. Um, but I also learned pretty quickly that there are some predictable things that you can zero in on uh, with some technical analysis. And so instead of purchasing uh, with the dollar cost average concept, I would put money into a separate account in that way and then i followed this guy on youtube uh he used to post every single day named grok trade really skilled trader with no personal interest in the metals markets at all he just analyzes charts and uh, so i learned from him I, as i got pouring I, and even when i was stacking i was stacking really hard um and so I was making purchases sometimes daily, and I would use his advice to decide which ones would be the big purchases because he would, with his te technical analysis skills, be able to kind of lay out to me the patterns that, that we're seeing and which were most likely to come into, come into the future. So I used that really successfully. Um, and then I stopped stacking in 2018 in my personal stack. I reached uh, my goals were 5,000 ounces of silver and 20 ounces of gold. And uh, since then, I take, I've take i always had the plan was I wanted to kind of play and do some flipping and some different things mm -hmm. like that. So I had a, a pretty, pretty diverse stack. And I still am kind of converting some of my collectibles to just straight up bullion. The, it's what I call my perma stack. That's what will be left to my heirs. Okay. And so I didn't want it's as you both know, there's some time and effort involved in knowing what certain things are worth. And I didn't sure. want that to be something that I left to my wife was a mm -hmm. job. Right. So I set a five year goal of, of uh, at the end of this five years, I wanted to have in my perma stack a, certain percentage of gold certain percentage of just straight up bullion mostly 100 ounce and kilo bars okay. and junk silver and so at the end of 2019 ish i'm pretty close to having the stack be just straight stuff that my wife can handle um and a, a tip that i'd have is if you're married and i'm i'm almost i'm you know late 50s and i'm not i haven't lived a uh 
a particularly healthy life. So I'm, I'm on the, the die young plan. So I wanted to make sure that uh, my wife was set up with this asset. And so we took the time, we set up seller accounts for her at all of the major dealers. And so she can just instantly make a phone call and we practiced it and uh, nice. she can sell. Nice. Yeah, she can sell something and she'll have the money uh, direct deposit into her account in about four days. So it, it uh, that kind of became part of my motivation was to take care of her. Um, right. If you're young, it's, you know, it's still a good idea to think yeah. about. One never knows. Yeah. yeah. Oh, what, what's my plan? It's all a gift. What's my, what's my exit plan? When am I going right. to sell? Under what conditions am I going to sell? Who am I going to sell to? Yep. All those questions right. are, are things that you'll learn by following experienced folks like you and, and others on YouTube, trying to understand, okay, how, how does this game play successfully? And right. so that's and, what I've tried to do. You know, and, and to that point, undoubtedly, there will be a comment in the comment section that says buy and hold, never sell. Never sell and, you know, right. there, there's some there's some diehard never sellers. But, you know, the reality is, what are you leaving it? You're, you are going to leave it to somebody. You're not going to be buried with it. Maybe you will. Right. I don't know. Right. But right, when you leave it to somebody, what the heck are they going to do with it? it, it know, exactly. The, the, that's just it. And the, the comments like that, it's not that they're comical. I mean, I appreciate them. You appreciate them. It, it is what it is. People are going to say what they're going to say. <laughs> You know, but there's still the fact as our guest is doing, had to go through the process of showing his wife, helping his wife of what to do with this stuff. If there is a time that he's not around and it's going to have to be something done with it. Right. And that's steps that you have to take Husky. We talked about it for the past couple of weeks and what I just showed my wife, same, not same thing, but it was showing that this isn't just a trinket this has value right, right. yeah i didn't want i didn't want her to need to liquidate something and have to take my role of whatever like i've got a role of 20 uh perth mint error coins from 2017 i think like one of their only recognized errors that the phoenix uh the phoenix, yep. Drive, yep. phoenix mirrored yeah. gap yep mirrored gap um which is triple or more spot price i didn't right. i didn't want her to be rolling into the coin store and taking a buck under spot for some of the stuff so that yeah. was what really got me thinking about you know this is going to be more work it's not it's not something that will make my passing easier for her <laughs> it yep. will make it more difficult um you reminded me when you talked about the comment someone will say buy and hold um there are things that are, I guess you would say, which would be the orthodox thinking, and that might be one of them. Um, I'm a more, if you're going to do more than passively have silver, um, you need to always be both a buyer and a seller. First, it makes, Absolutely. You, more, yes. makes you more knowledgeable about the product that you're handling. It makes you know more, um, but it also, it, it gives you an opportunity to, to profit under any market conditions. So you have to have a play. If you're going to play the game, you and need to, to feel good play. about it. Just to feel good about it. Yeah. Yeah. You have but, to know what you're going to do and you have to have a plan and you have to have a strategy and you have to have a product to sell. So if spot goes way down, Maybe that's the time you want to sell that one piece that's not really tied to spot so much because it's so collectible or right. things like that. And the other kind of um, orthodox thinking would be buy what you like or stack what you like. We hear that a lot. Sure. And, uh, to a certain degree, I agree with that. But I shifted to um, stack what other people like. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's sound. If your goal is to, you know, give it to your great, great, great grandchildren, maybe then stack what you like. But if your goal is at some point in the next decades to, to liquidate, um, it, nobody cares what you like. 
when you sell. So uh, I understand the concept. It keeps you involved and it helps you buy things long ago, but it also leads people to make some pretty dumb decisions. And I made some of those and quickly realized I'm going to, I'm going to focus more on what other people like. Right. And you know, that's, that's actually really good advice that I've heard related in the business world. Also, like if you're going to start a business mm -hmm. and you're starting a business based on what you like, let's say, I don't know, um, organic ethically sourced dog collars. Mm -hmm. The that's question a, is, that, yeah, it's, it's great, but is it, is there a market for is it? it? And maybe there is right. a market. Is it sellable? Does anybody else want it? Uh, right, you yeah. know, like if you, if you want like, uh, Chinese and I don't know, Mexican fusion, maybe that's a great thing. Maybe that'd be really awesome. Uh, but you know, would it actually sell? I don't know. Maybe that one was yeah. a bad example, but you're right. You're buying things that, that you like. Does anyone else even care that that piece looks the way it is? Or maybe it's, uh, I don't know. There's some pieces like, um, uh, iron maiden, uh, the iron maiden yeah. coin that came yeah. out. This is very specific. You either like them or you don't. That's right. Uh, and how many other people like Iron Maiden and collect silver? You know, it's like such a narrow pool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, but sp speaking of specific pieces, you don't yes. you don't just do pouring, right? You do other stuff. Um, I do. I have one piece that I did in 2022 as a collaboration with Intaglio Mint, mm. um, based on a sculpture that I saw, probably seven or eight years ago and uh he and i had followed each other on youtube since both of us pretty much started so we were familiar with each other and i i knew i wanted to make this round someday mm. so in 2022 actually it was 2021 i contacted intaglio mint and we put together a collaboration piece a two ounce uh pretty high premium collectible round that was dual branded pretty sure the only dual branded thing he's ever done. Um, the plan was to follow that up in 2023 with a one ounce lower premium version. Um, that I had to put off until just, just came out just now. So it was just 2024. Recently. Awesome. And that's, uh, it's called In God We Trust, uh, The Prayer at Valley Forge. Look and at that. You, see, you see on the obverse, um, that's George Washington at Valley Forge, and I thought it fit my my uh, my concept and and channel really well with the horse uh, bending his head in the back. Oh yeah, yeah. And, uh, that was a really neat project. Yeah, Look at the light down below. Yeah, that likeness of George Washington. That's as good as anything the U.S. Mint's put out in a long time with George. Very Washington. clean. The hairline, the cheek line, the cheek, the shadows is. Yeah. So it's a it's a really done piece. This one Sword is sword here. Yeah, I love the uh, on the other picture. You'll see the details on the boot. Oh, sorry. There yeah. you go. <laughs> details on the boot. Yeah, and the details, and the details the on the boot, kind of ruffled. And the buttons and the buttons on the cuffs and the folds of the. I mean, it's really just well done. There was a European sculptor that translated the statue to the the coin. Wow. Um, I never got to know his name because it wasn't his artwork. The artwork was done uh, in the end of the 1800s. Right. So he didn't put his name on it, which is the way an artist should think. Um, but he did such a terrific job. And you see here on the reverse, um, this was in Talia. There is a name on that, th this one. Yeah, this was in Talia Mint. Uh, it's just my logo this time. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, with the In God We Trust motto in the background of the field. Um, I really love the concept and I'm attracted to things that are beautiful. And uh, that's a really so good view of it here. We went ahead and made a thousand of these and they just came out a couple of weeks ago. Something I'm pretty proud of. And where can someone find this piece? When I first started stacking, I, I had some experience in building websites. So I built myself a little site it's called tastysilver.com. And uh, so I just have my own little site and that's where they're available now. Um, and they'll be available on the AppMex site oh. probably about two weeks. Excellent. Excellent. And so you guys can find that link in the description below. 
Yes, his website yeah. link, direct buy link to this piece is going to be in the description below. Excellent. Very nice. Yeah. That is that is I a like stunning that. piece. Yeah, I, got, I want to I want to bring this up one more time. This is it's a nice piece. Thank you. I, uh, Very nice. I like. Do you have any other upcoming pieces that you uh, have in the works? I would like this. The minimum mintage to work with a mint like Intaglio, which was my first choice. I really like the work he does. Right. Um, is a thousand. And so I would like to have this be a little bit of a series if I'm successful. I've, um, they're selling steadily. I'm just a, just a dude in a bunker making silver, but uh, um, people seem to like it. I, I used the 2022 round to fund this one. And then I'll use this one, hopefully, to fund the artwork for the next one. Um, I have not contacted her, and I will at some point. But I would really like somebody like Heidi Wasweet to do a In God We Trust theme for the obverse and use the same reverse. So... If the round is successful, I hope to make it into a little bit of a series using uh, artists that I respect to create new obverses. It's funny you mentioned her. We're actually in the works of trying to get her on the show in yeah. the oh. upcoming weeks. Yeah. Tell yeah. <laughs> her about me, man. So when I contact her, she won't think I'm crazy. <laughs> I was going to tell you to tell her about us so that she can, uh, she can secure that date. And we let's can just tell everybody about team. everybody and let's just figure this out. Not, so. I really right like on. her. I first oh, she's fantastic. So she's the one who did the uh, Egyptian God series. And yes, I right. think she did one or two other really good series like that. Um, the one she did some work with the U.S. Mint and lots she of others. Mm -hmm. But the one that really caught my attention um, was her Freedom Girl in 2013. Mm. Mm -hmm. Have you seen that one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. And yeah, she's uh, got an eye for for really nice, nice designs. That's when I started following her work. And uh, also, I guess at about the same time, she did. Um, it might have been the first time I I heard of her. Pit Bullion did a, 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 I think it was on that Egyptian series, some gold plated. So they did mm. a kind of a small run of of gold plating on some of her, cool. her pieces. That was a Provident yeah. series, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those went through Provident Metals. Um, that and the, what was it, the Privateer rounds also, which yeah, are similar style. Yeah. 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 Very neat. Awesome. Well, hi-ho. This was uh, fantastic having you on the show. We really do appreciate you coming on. Yeah, it's very nice to meet you. Oh, you too. I, I hope we can speak again. I've, uh, it's nice to see faces in this game. So uh, yeah, yeah, no doubt, for sure. right? For sure, no it's good doubt. to see your face. Put a, put a <laughs> face to the name. First time I've ever heard that. But uh, <laughs> oh shoot! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, guys, for the viewers, if you're still uh, watching, don't forget to sign up to win our five ounce silver pour. This is a wood wood pour. Uh, hi ho! I don't know if you've done a wood pour before. I'm sure you have, but I actually haven't. But that was one of the first things I let saw. him see it. Let him see oh, it. Oh, where is it? Uh, I don't even know. Where is it? Here, here we go. Okay. This is this is us. No, we did this one. Oh, there good you go. You. Yeah. So what this is a five ounce pour. Uh, pine. This one was nice. pine. Yeah, came out That's really great, nice. Man. A lot of nice detail. Looks like dragon scale almost. So veiny, I say. So veiny. So this is up for grabs. Anybody who wants to win that, there's three ways to win. You'll find them in the description section the below. Description below. Don't forget All to sign them. up. <laughs> all, <laughs> all right. right. But thank you guys for watching. This is The Crucible. We will see you all next week.